let me thank you for attending this meeting about which we have uh, uh, a lot of expectation. And, uh, I will tell you in a, in a minute what the ambition of our project. Uh, this meeting is a sort of a, uh, almost mid-term landmark. Um, we expect both uh, uh, scientific uh, an update on scientific advances and the policy implication of our um, enterprise. But let me welcome first of all Peter and give Peter the floor. He has been uh, really instrumental in uh, organizing this meeting, probably certainly, without him he would have not uh, had it here. Um, and we continue to be grateful for uh, his sponsorship. Thank you very much, Giovanni. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, friends, citizens of Rome. <laughs> um, when I spoke with Mariana some time ago, during the, the crisis was still, or the crises were still going on. They're still going on. <laughs> well, we have a different reading here from, uh, from Brussels. Uh, but I, I'm even recovered. This is our politically correct target. Um, Mayanne mentioned, said, there should be no Nobel Prize for economists. They don't deserve it. Really? Yeah, he said that. Um, and we agree. And I think um, that is um, a nice provocation. Um, and uh, sets the scene for, for his project. <laughs> and um, let me put it in the following context. I, I recently moved um, within the Research Innovation Department of the European Commission from innovation to industrial technologies. And in industrial technologies, there is a big hype about what is called um, the fourth industrial revolution or industry 4.0. And it's still uh, uh, rather um, early on, uh, the concept is not very clear yet, but you know that you talk about industry 4.0 if you have terms like um, preventive maintenance. Um, and this is all about sensors giving immediate feedback allowing remote uh, maintenance. And I think Economy 4.0 would be nice with um, anticipative maintenance so that we um, do not fall from one crisis to the other, um, but that we are faster in acting and anticipating. Um, that, I think, is uh, for me also the, the ambition for, for the project, for your project here. You put the term austerity. Uh, in the program. That's always good to attract attention. <laughs> um, my plea would be uh, not to be dogmatic. Uh, and uh, to be, it's not about the, on which side are you. Um, and I would also plea for avoiding um, uh, an attitude of moral superiority. Um, that we know better than um, others. But it's all about facts. So not dogma, facts. Mm -hmm. Let me give you an example um, how difficult I think it is um, to handle um, complex facts um, in terms of also public perception. Because perception, even if they're wrong, are still facts. And um, when we look at um, the um, financial assistance to Greece, which is immediately associated with uh, austerity. I think the common belief is that all the money went to them. 90%. No. <laughs> My figure is 64. Um, half, half of them, half, half 50, 51% went to the bank. The other half went to finance the Greek public expenditure. So it's not 95%, it's a SEPS report of, of this year, which uh, is providing exactly uh, this evidence. I think also the public opinion considers
feels that the creditors are the winners. Um, but the fact is that 64% of Greek bonds have been cancelled and the creditors lost it. So um, I think it is, this is just one example um, how important it is to have um, evidence. And I understand from, from your project, and you are now one year into the project, um, that you want to look at the long-term uh, effects. You have a strong emphasis on diagnostics, uh, on the relationship uh, between innovation jobs and growth, and what you call a, financial, a financialized economy. So um, this kind of evidence is uh, really important. Your, your second uh, delivery big delivery um, is um, policy scenarios and the coherent policy toolkit. I just can't wait to see. <laughs> um, um, really, this is would be fantastic. The challenges I see is that this interlinkage between, or the interlinkages between innovation, uh, growth, employment are very complex. Um, we often say that 60% um, of productivity growth in uh, industrialized economies come from investment in innovation. But do we really have the evidence? Can we have um, facts and figures um, there? Then we have this rising inequalities, which is now recognized as um, a barrier to growth. And it seems that the technology drives the increasing um, uh, difference between rich and poor, and not just between uh, around the globe, but uh, within Europe, which is a real challenge um, for uh, the European Union. So very important, I think, is to look at labor market inequalities. <coughs> and then to translate all this, and this is a challenge to translate all your evidence and new knowledge of the soil into policy action. This um, is maybe the biggest challenge of all. We have, in, in the European research, we often speak of a paradox, a European paradox, that we are good in uh, research and creating knowledge, but not good in uh, turning this into social and economic value. I think we not also have a European paradox in terms of policy. We do know quite well what's happening, but we are not able to uh, transfer this into policy action. Um, my last point is about the benchmark I see for this um, project. And I think a good benchmark um, Piketty with his book Capitalism in the 20th, 21st Century. Um, he ends with not only is there a long time database which has showed how inequality in, 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 in this uh, VAC inequality is developed, but that he makes a proposal for a European directive how to address the issue. So the challenge I think for this project is to go beyond Piketty. Because what happened with this EPS is, for me, it's a benchmark because it's, um, for me, one of the best evidence we have of what is happening, what has happened over the last um, two or three generations. Um, the results have been policy proposals, but it has not been, or not yet been, taken up. So the benchmark will be Piketty and beyond, and perhaps the Nobel Prize. Over to you, Bill. Okay. Brings bad luck. <laughs> <coughs> Thank you, Peter. Um, I think uh, I don't need to summarize the project because uh, you have summarized it so well. And, uh, <coughs> in fact, I mean, the project is very ambitious. I mean, it, it's trying to uh, offer a sort of broad diagnostic. Uh, of uh, contemporary capitalism in general and in particular in Europe. Uh, I would say, I mean, uh, what is the benchmark? Uh, 
I'd go even beyond Pinkerton. Some of you might know Andrew Schoenfield, uh, written in 1968, about uh, modern capitalism. That was a broad diagnostic of uh, what appeared to be the progressive social democratic uh, uh, New Deal uh, capitalism, high growth, uh, um, low inequality. Uh, my, my ambition, our ambition here would be to have a modern capitalism number two, the revenge, or something like that, uh, in which uh, we make a broad diagnostic of what what in our view in our view went wrong in over the last 40 years or so, or 35 years or so, uh, of which, of course, uh, inequality is a big part, uh, but uh, there is also lower rate of growth, uh, higher unemployment, and of course the things are, are correlated. Um, some uh, fiscal problem for all, of the state, uh, uh, even before the crisis, globalization. Uh, globalization is, is a controversial phenomenon. It brought, uh, it brought advantages, but also it brought uh, some major drawbacks, including uh, uh, the reduction of the uh, power of the state uh, uh, to exercise power. We, I mean, when we wrote this project, we had uh, all these questions in mind, uh, and uh, so placing uh, the the analysis of what uh, what is wrong, what goes wrong in Europe, uh, into this broader context. Uh, this is why you also we decided to have this, uh, uh, this, uh, this austerity meeting and decided to have it here to, to be able to dialogue uh, uh, with the Commission and uh, with the Euro European politician. You know. um, austerity is not uh, all uh, uh, the causes of everything that is wrong in Europe, uh, but uh, is a, is a, is a significant part. Um, understanding uh, uh, the merits, if there are, uh, and uh, the, the damages that austerity provokes in uh, the short term and possibly even in the long term uh, is, uh, is also part of, uh, uh, is preliminary to any, uh, uh, to any prescription on what to do on what to do for the future. Uh, we, yes, we want to go, we, we don't want to have an ideological statement, um, and we don't want to do, to have a, neither uh, ideological prescription. I mean, it is easy and see to say innovation. Innovation will solve everything. Uh, no, innovation will not solve everything because if you don't have a consistency between innovation policy and macro policy, uh, you don't do anything. I mean, the, uh, the idea that, uh, for example, uh, from the Juncker plan that the multiplier between public investment and private investment is around 10 is a pie in the sky. Uh, and we've got to, and we've got to say, um, the <coughs> There is a, 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 a fine and com, com, uh, complicated uh, co-evolutionary path between macro policies and, uh, and innovation policies. I'm sure that Mariano will talk a lot about this uh, during the day. <coughs> the, well, the invitation to, to the speaker is uh, uh, to the academic speaker is uh, tell us uh, the analytical advancement uh, without uh, without technicalities. We'll have the intuition in understanding the technicalities, and we'll read it uh, uh, in your paper. And tell, but do tell us, and together do tell us the uh, practical implication, the political economy implication 
of your diagnostic exercise. On that, uh, 